The Screamers MacBook Pro has been an idea for quite some time now, but what is it? Let's get into it. The laptop being used with its screen literally ripped out is usually when the display is broken or glitching. But you may ask, what can I do with the bottom half only? That's exactly what I'm going to talk about now. Well essentially, you're going to be getting your speakers, the keyboard, the trackpad, and of course the computer internals and the system. Instead of having to buy a speaker, the mouse, the keyboard, you're going to have all that into one and essentially if you'd like to, you could bring it around. So it's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Now let's get into the chair now. There are 10 screws all around the back of the MacBook, which are Apple's unique pencil screws, which you can get on Amazon for a screwdriver pretty cheaply. I wouldn't recommend using the Phillips screw because I tried and it didn't really work and it does risk stripping the screws and making it hard to unscrew in the future. So I'll link down below the one I used, which was around $10 on Amazon and came with several other attachments as well. Make sure when you're taking out the screws that they are placed in the same order as taken out because sometimes they do tend to be different sizes and it's better to put them back in the exact same spot as you took them out. Over here I'm just going to go ahead and start up the computer to kind of show you guys what my screen looked like. I forgot to do that earlier so here you can see that it is a bit glitchy. So this is why I'm deciding to take off the screen and test it out. But it's also important to note that you should be powering off your computer fully and disconnecting it from the charger port so that the battery is fully disconnected and turned off. Now that we got the laptop closed, we're going to turn it back over and I did notice that my computer was a bit dusty so I did take a brush and go ahead and clean it. I didn't want to blow it off with some compressed air or anything, just some light brush and just to dust it all off. Before we start anything, it is important to disconnect the battery, so that's the first thing we're going to do. The battery disconnector is located right where the arrow is shown, and here we go. Now, it was a bit difficult at first, I was a bit hesitant to disconnect the battery, but after a while I kind of figured it out and tried prying it open using the flathead screwdriver. But then after, I did notice that you could just take it out with your hand, just using a little bit more force than usual. So don't be afraid to use it, just also don't go full on and disconnecting it, tugging it out. Now that we got the battery disconnected, oh, double check, it's all disconnected, all the pins are good. We are going to go ahead and flip over the computer to access more of the cable ports with ease. Now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections which are located here, number two here, and last one over here. Now there also is a camera connector located right there. We're going to make sure we're being really delicate with these cables as you would not want to damage them because you will need to reconnect them in the future to get your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth back. However, in this video we won't be able to be re-establishing our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections because it was only after finishing this project that I tested and found out that the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth unfortunately did not work. But I did end up finding a solution which took a couple days and will be posted in the next video. Getting out the camera cable was a bit more difficult than I thought. As you can see, I have been thinking about how I can get that without breaking or damaging anything. So just be, again, very delicate while you're trying to get it out. You can try prying it out with a flathead screwdriver, as you can see me doing that right now. And if not, just continue trying to pry that out open because you will need to get that out in order to disconnect the screen.
and it was only around here where I was actually able to get out this cord without damaging everything so yet again it is important to be cautious while taking out and be patient while trying to take this out. I pried it open using the flathead screwdriver and then with my hands I was able to take it out. With the cables now disconnected, you can pull them up from the fan, which the cables are glued onto them, so it is important to just be careful once again, and then take them off slowly off the fan. Once the first section popped off, I decided to take a sticky note, yep, a sticky note, and I kind of just use it to get more leverage and just safely take it off without damaging any of the cables. And then once you have taken it off, as you see, it's all off, you're going to try and take it off the cable harnessing onto the right and take it out of its housing. Once you have taken the cables out from the housing, you can remove the triangular rubber hinge cap stuck on both sides, which, which are held together with some adhesive. This will expose the six hinge screws keeping your screen connected to the laptop. But don't go unscrewing those screws right away. We need to unscrew the small metal hinge cover on both sides, which are right next to those big screws. And this small hinge cover is held by a single T5 screw. The final thing that we're going to be having to take off before getting off the screen is the display data cable. That one is located where the arrow is shown and you just going to have to pull up a small lever which you can pry up using a flat head screwdriver and then just pull it back. It may be intimidating for beginners such as me, I had a bit of struggles worrying that it might snap the cable, just be confident and pull it back. Once you have it up, you can just use your hand and pull it as you can see in the video. Now we got it. Now we're all set to remove the screen and we can start by taking out the two Torque T8 screws for this from the display. So we're going to grab two from each side but leave the screws closest to the screen still on. Once you have done so, you're going to want to turn the computer sideways and then get a hold of both sides of the computer, both the screen and the bottom here to be in your hands and be safe with them. You're going to unscrew the last screw on both sides and then slowly, once you've got that, you're going to pull apart the display from the computer. So now you can see me pulling apart the display very carefully. And once you have them, just separate them. And now that they're separated, you can carefully place them both back down. Now that we have successfully taken off the display, we're going to go ahead and put all of the screws and pieces back into where they belong so that we can put on the cover of the MacBook Pro back on. 
now that you have all your screws in place, it's time to finally reconnect the battery. So you just can go ahead and push it back where all the pins align. Now that the cover is back on, we're gonna place back all the screws back into the correct positions. Remember, you should have had all these screws in a correct order so that you know in which screw location they should be going in. Alright, now that we have taken on the display, we can go ahead and try to see if we've done everything correctly and whether or not it'll turn on. You can go ahead, plug in your display port, USB-C port, whatever it might be to connect to your monitor or external display, and go ahead, power on that. So we have heard the sound, okay, whoa. Now it's rebooting, getting it to be prepared, I hope. Okay, and everything does seem to work. Got the trackpad moving, everything's good. We can go ahead and log in. And yeah, we're in. That is the end of the video. If you did like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notifications so you don't worry about the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection yet as that will be in the next video. Thanks a ton for watching.